So we've got another question from one of my subscribers who goes by the name of Brittany. And her email reads, Hey Keith, I wanted to share my testimony with you. Now I won't be reading her full testimony because that's not really what I want to deal with in this video. But her email continues and she says, I've been saved now for eight months and my life hasn't changed. Why hasn't God improved my financial situation? My boss refuses to give me a raise even though I've proven myself to have to having the highest production month to month. He refuses to give me a raise. Also, my boyfriend hasn't proposed to me yet and our relationship has actually gotten worse since I gave my life to God. Why are all these things happening now? Is God mad at me? Thanks for the help, Keith. Now, as we can see, there's a lot wrong here and I've explained to her what is wrong so I won't be dealing with that with this particular video. But what I like to focus on is this, is this erroneous view that many people have about what life is supposed to be like after you come to salvation or after you, you've been born again. Now, whether or not this young lady has actually truly been saved is questionable, but what we need to be careful about is how we view life in Christ after conversion. See, here's the problem. Our minds have been so shaped and molded by this lost world to desire health, wealth, and prosperity that the ignorant believe that coming to Christ means getting everything your heart desires. Now, think about her email. Everything she mentioned had everything to do about her. My job, my finances, my relationship, me, 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 all about me. And that's your first mistake. Because this is not about you. This is about Jesus Christ, his gospel, and his glory, period. Let me say that again. This is about Jesus Christ, his gospel, and his glory. But you might be sitting there saying, okay, well, what about, what about me? Okay, what about my needs? Now, one of my all-time favorite verses and one that I often refer to is Matthew 6.33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Let your needs be made known to God through prayer, Philippians 4, but understand that your eyes should be set, should not be set on your own needs. Okay, and this is where faith comes into play. Do you really believe you serve a God that desires to give you good gifts? Matthew 7, 11. So if you want all your needs to be met, seek first his kingdom and his will. Okay, let that be your chief desire, and I promise you, because I've seen it in my own life over and over again, your needs will be met perfectly, okay? Says you, he says, look, you followed my persecutions. Timothy, you just didn't follow my teaching. You followed me straight into hell. You know, it's so funny. I grew up watching these different big evangelistic campaigns where someone would be asked to give their testimony, you know? And it would always be, I was a failure, everything was falling apart, I came to know Jesus and everything became wonderful. Right? Paul, tell us your testimony. Well, I was number one among my contemporaries, the most respected among my people. Everyone looked to me. Well, how is it now that you met Christ? I'm considered the off-scouring of the world. The scum of the earth. Everywhere I go, they cry out, this man is not worthy to live. Away with him. You see? Never forget what we are told in 1 Timothy. All who are godly will be persecuted. If no one has ever been offended by you because of your Christian faith, you're not godly.